back. I had somebody that was asking me about the process of pouring. So I figured I'd give it a little rundown breakthrough of what all, well, what all I use, um, just stuff that you can use for different processes. Um, anything from pressure pot to stabilizing, um, vacuum pot, vacuum pump, molds, dyes, epoxies, all that stuff. So, where to begin? All right, so I use a lot of different epoxies. Um, there's Amazing Clearcast Plus, which is this one. It's got the best UV resistance. It's one to one by volume. So you're gonna need measuring cups for this. And right now I'm out of the clear slow, which is one to one by weight, which is where the scale comes in. So <clears throat> you can get these cups. I got these from my local S hardware. And <clears throat> the amazing clear cast is one to one by volume also. Both of them have the same um, cure time, pot life, all that stuff. The Clear Slow, it does have a seven minute pot life. Um, I got it right here. I don't really use a Clear Slow just because of its quickness. It's good for if you're gonna use something like a single color that you're just gonna mix up. But when I do multiple colors, Clear Slow, it's only got a seven minute pot life. So yeah, you could pre-mix your colors in the part A and then mix in your part B pour it and get it under pressure in that amount of time but i like the clear slow which is a 12 minute used to be 12 to 14 minutes but now they got it labeled at 12 minutes no, pot life meaning whenever you stir it up once you get it fully stirred up you've got 12 minutes before it starts to go off or cure in the pot and starts to bubble and get hot um, the amazing clear it's thick Word of advice, get you one of these. Sitting there stirring that stuff up with a popsicle stick in large quantities will wear your arm and wrist out quick. Um, they do have a deep pour, which is 24 to 72 hour pot life. It's two to one by weight. Meaning if you're gonna do uh, say six ounces, you'll do, well, in order to roll nine ounces, you'll do three ounces, six ounces of part A, and then three ounces of part B. Um, mold stuff, HDP plastic. What I've got is a piece of HDP that I took and cut round on my bandsaw, and then all I've got to do is take the molds, which, for the bases I've done, I do squares. I fold them all up, tape them up. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed, but you get the idea of it. I'll put the spikes on the burls pointing in and then fill that with epoxy, toss it in my pressure pot and go. This is from the Spotted Maple Base. I got a mold and I'll do it around a three inch piece of pipe, well, not three inch. That one, I just did it around the burl. It's burl. The maple block that was spalted, I did it around it and hot glued it down to here and it sticks real good. And the hot glue peels right off of the tuck tape. And it comes right off the HCP plastic. I mean, it, it holds real good. If you was to jostle it around and hit it pretty hard, you might break it loose and have a leak in your pressure pot. Um, so try not to bump it too hard. And with the amazing clear, if you get it to where it's still, it will still settle, but it's thick. You can do your custom swirls in it. This is a piece off of a, um, end table that I did a while back. I snapped this off just playing around with it. Um, 
I say this stuff and did a junk bowl, junk in a bowl bowl. I don't like this. There's all kind of crap inside of here. Leftover pieces and different epoxies poured in there that was left over. Um, so that's how I got that, which is why I have this right here. This is from the spalted blue vase also. I know you've probably seen lately that I've now got a discount for eye candy mica powders in which I've partnered up with them. Um, they got these 25 gram bags that you can buy and they're around 10 bucks in these 50 gram jars. They're 16, so that's a real pretty blue. And dyes, I use all of Limelight dyes, which I think I've got just about all of them. And last year, back 2019, Black Friday sale, they had a heck of a deal in which they did this year also, but they didn't include dyes with the epoxy when you ordered it. So right now I've got three whites, three blacks, three ocean blues, <laughs> which that's probably enough to last me a long time considering how good this stuff is. I mean, it's one drop goes a seriously long way. I got your transparent blue, transparent green, opaque greens, opaque yellows, transparent yellows, transparent browns, transparent purple, oranges, reds, flow pinks, or fluorescent pink. Red, I'm getting kind of low on that one. And also on molding stuff, anything that's HDP. Let's see if I can get that in frame. If you look on the bottom, there we are. HDP plastic, the epoxy doesn't want to stick. It will stick just a little bit, but you can break it free pretty easy. And tuck tape. That's what this is. Cargo box, drink boxes. Um, any kind of thin cardboard or thick cardboard if you want to use it works also. Gloves. You do not want to get epoxy on your hands. That stuff is so thick and sticky and even funny. And Lemon Light, they've got... This is the UNMAR. I need to get some of the stoner release. And... You can see right here. I'll take a piece of paper. Anytime I'm doing pours, I'll write down how much, if I'm doing it by weight, I'll write down how much um, I do per color. Um, I know I was talking last time about the bubbles and stuff, and this is one of the pieces I did a while back, just a little playing around. You can see all the bubbles, and it kind of kind of reminds me of a Galaxy Night Sky type deal. Which I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, pressure pot. Gotta have it for clear, slow, clear. Um, and if you're gonna do amazing clear, where any. The deep pour you can get away with. I'm not sure what the thickest you could pour, but you can pour the amazing clear, which that's what I do to get. Um, good swirl and good color separation just because it's so thick. The clear slow, you can get some good stuff going on out of it. Clear slow is good for going into cracks and just stuff like this. Somebody sent me a piece of um, Claro Walnut and it's in grain. So that's gonna be interesting how that comes out. Well, this is the California Air Tools before they started um, making them to where you didn't have to convert them. Michael, what is this right here? Why do you have a rag on here? This seriously helps with the sound. Whenever you're cracking the pressure off. I would not have done that if that was on here without something covering my ears. That seriously 
take a word of advice. Take your old shop towel, throw your zip ties on here, hold it in place. I just got paper, uh, paper towel, duct tape wrapped around it right there to hold it together where the air comes out. Um, I know they say 50 PSI, but I crank mine up to 60, 65 sometimes, depending on if I really want to force it in there. And sometimes it wants to stick. So, I cut this at 12 inches. It's right inside the bottom. And that's the reason why I got these tape tabs on here. So I can get my hands in there and grab it out. And it never hurts to spray some mold release inside of here just in case anything spills, which some stuff has spilled. Um, keeps it from sticking, keeps it from ruining your pressure pot. And whenever you're casting, if you've got a real tall piece, come on, honey, stay still. Keep in mind of where your air comes into your system at. Yeah, mine's right here. If you've got a tall piece and this is right over it and you go to put an air in here, you're gonna blow epoxy all over the inside of your pressure pot. So keep in mind of that. You do not wanna blow epoxy. Vacuum pump. I do hitting an air, so I got a cheater cord on mine for work. I can take one leg of 220 volt and run this thing off of it if I need to. Uh, this is a double pump, meaning it pumps, or two stage, it pumps on down and upstroke, five CFM. Um, works great. Pressure, uh, pressure pot, vacuum pot. It's for stabilizing. I'm gonna grab that real quick. Now I use the SOS 3.0 from Shed Life. Um, 90 bucks, you don't need an activator. If you keep it cold, I know there's some junk and gunk in the bottom of this. This is for what I'd use to stabilize. Um, wood that's not getting color. I've got some that's already got color in there. But keep it in the refrigerator, it's got over a year shelf life. Doesn't bubble up near as bad as the other stuff does. Um, pretty cool dude. His name's Ken. You can hit him up on Shed Life on Instagram or he's on Amazon and I mean, he's got his own store. But this one I think has a 11 inch inside capacity. I know they do make some that's bigger. Um, the lacquer that I use for clearing my pieces is Deft Gloss. Um, you're gonna need a heat gun if you're gonna do RC type pours. That's what I use and glue gun for your molds. The dyes that I use is Keta dye. They do have the powder, but I recently found out through them that they do offer the pre-mixed liquid and concentrate. And when I say concentrate, this stuff is super, super concentrated. This crimson red, um, it looks like dark red blood. Wood bowl finish from General Finishes. This stuff used to be called salad bowl finish. It's food safe urethane. Um, that goes over oil. You ain't gotta worry about it because it's oil based urethane. Um, you can use aluminum or full tape for making dams over places. Well, this is a dogwood bro I gotta do. Never mind the big old snake skin. I gotta try and figure out a way to put that into the outside rim of a bowl. And this little turd, I came across him when I was going through some stuff in the yard one day. He scared the crap out of me. And I think I scared the skin off of him because the next day his skin was laying out there. 
So the full tape, you can lay it on here and create a dam just to hold the epoxy to where it'll only go inside of the void. This piece, I wouldn't use it on. I'm gonna have to cast the whole thing because this hole could come out here. This could come out, I don't know. This thing's got plenty of voids. Pinner, pretty interesting piece though. Um, let's see the coloring in it. It's got some red, browns, blacks. Weird. But something like this, I'll stabilize before I cast it. This is some spalted river birch. Pretty, pretty punky. And the other thing is, if your bark or wood looks like that on the outside, you got curls on the inside. So, when you're looking for wood and you see a piece that's got like that on the outside, you're gonna have that on the inside. What else? Um, improperly mixed. This is just some goof off that I was doing. Um, I think it was one to two thirds and then one to three quarters. So it was improperly mixed. Got some whiting in it. Just playing around. That's all I do all the time. And if you have any kind of moisture in your wood, this was clear slow, it was clear slow is urethane and urethane is finicky when it comes to moisture. You're gonna get some whiting in it. You can see where it makes the wood. I got little white whisks in there. Um, okay, let's go to the shop. Another thing real quick on your air compressor, keep this thing drained. If you start having any kind of whiting in your epoxy, it's because you've got moisture in your air compressor. You need to drain it at probably about every three or four pours. That will mess up a pour in a heartbeat. Also, real quick, food safe finishes. Told you that one was food safe. That's food safe. Mahoney's walnut oil is food safe. And this is actually naturally curing inside the wood. It takes a little bit longer than stuff that's not food safe. Even has it right here on the outside. And surprise! All of Lim Light's amazing clear line is food safe. So you can do a pour, just brush it on the outside of a bowl or whatever, and food safe finish. Now I was talking about dye stabilizing. This piece of maple burl right here, you can see it's pretty punky. That's gonna have to be stabilized. So this is some stuff that I was just goofing around with, dye stabilizing with the, um, lemon light transparent blue you can see where i had to bake it and that's the thing about um stabilizing resin is you have to bake it to get it to cure i just realized my finger looks nasty nice little burn from my wood stove in my shop it don't hurt um so yeah you can do some cool stuff with this stuff um I'll show you another piece that I'm currently working on. So this is a piece that I dye stabilized. It was pretty dang punky. And the cool thing is, is those zones in the spalted part where it was super punky, it sucked in the dye a lot further than the wood was hard. So it gives it a pretty cool effect. The only bad part is, is this thing was as blue as that. Like it looked like that when I pulled it out. How it got these colors in there, I will never know. But that's some of the stuff that you can get out of dye stabilizing. See like, where did you come from? You are not blue at all. all right, there's a little bit of blue in there, but you are like lime green. Dark lime green. And also for spraying your holoforms or bases, whatever. 
I'm a bachelor, so I don't have to worry about a significant other fussing because I'm using the paper towel holder. It works. Another thing, I got a video up a while back, but these bags right here, um, the little gag IV bags that you can buy to drink liquor out of or liquor. I'm sorry, beverages. This liquor's my choice if I was to do it. Um, anyway, you can drink beverages out of these. You can put your wood bowl finish or whatever finish in these things and it keeps the oxygen out and keeps them from curing. It's a problem that I was having with the wood bowl finish is every time you open it up to use it, that's very unfortunate shit. And light box. This is actually, I kid you not, my microwave went out and I had to get a new one. So this is a microwave cardboard box that I spray panned the white on the inside. Got a background. And these are just um, aluminum rim lights. I got one right here on the front because it likes to, it casts light a little bit better. And I've got two more white ones over here and I've got a yellow one. Oh, don't fall. Something interesting about only a white light is. Yeah. It brings out the colors. So I didn't do a video of this one. Because I like to just get back to the basics and just turn without having to worry about a camera sometime. This is kind of like the green one that I did but red and yellow, looks like fire. And this one is just regular maple that's curly. That dyed black and blue. And left the inside natural. So light box, cardboard box with um, diffusion fabric. You get it on Amazon. And I got it over here because you get that. Where is, oh, come on, you fell off. It's more muted. Just hard and stuff, super glossy. All right, wood kiln. Many, many videos out there on them. I'm gonna have to do a breakdown of how I've got this thing set up because it's pretty cool. Mine actually has a thermostat that keeps it at 95 degrees. And it's got a ceramic heat lamp in there. So fully functional thermostat. Here clicking on and off. I've had this stuff in here at 90 degrees for a while and I got it wrapped up with saran wrap to keep it from drying too fast and promote spalting. Um, this is, this is Hackberry. I forgot what this is. I don't even know. Um, some more Hackberry, but um, this is actually some Redbud Burl. I got all kinds of stuff in here. Cherry Burl, Bull Blanks, you name it. I'll do a video on how to wire this thing up. Circle Hut and Jig. You just got to. So, piece of plywood. And what I've got here is a block that stops. Eh, it's a little bit off, but what you're going to want is that center line. I mean, my holes are kind of crooked, but the center line where it stops at to be on the edge of the cutting teeth. Now it's burned everything in. And when you make one, make sure you cut this out wide. 
because as you're cutting it's going to fill it with debris and when you try to slide it out it's going to be clogged up and you're going to pull your blade off and the one that i use is the laguna, laguna 1412 um currently got it wired up to 120 i've got a 220 plug over there that i can um use i just got to get that wired in um no problem out of this thing at uh 120 volt matter of fact this is some red bud and you just cut your little hole in the bottom for your pivot dowel to go into you'll set it on there and just turn it around while it's cutting And the blade that you'll need to get, the one that I use is a Timberwolf alternate tooth. I'm trying to get it to where you can see it a little bit better. You can kind of see it right here, but it cuts left and right. It's a 3 8 um, I think it's a 3 TPI alternate tooth. But it cuts left and right and creates a wide path for that blade to cut to come through when you're turning a blank. Um, sometimes the wood wants to close back under tension, which can pinch the blade. And that's the reason why you want to use a alternate tooth to create a wide track for the blade to come through there. I've cut hickory, I've cut black walnut. This is a red, like I said, red bud crotch. Red bud don't get that big, Michael. Yeah, I know. Very fine. Um, it's more red bud, more red bud, more red bud. Peach. Black walnut. Willow. Silver maple. Much oak burl. And I've got some huge chunks of pecan. This is sycamore. Is that it? Yeah. That's funky. That's actually small. Um, you can see that right there is looking pretty gnarly too. More of that red stuff. I don't know. That's the first time I've seen it get that blood red. Why? Why? There's nothing back there. No. I'm not trying to get nothing. You're okay. So yeah. I mean, you can cut blanks and blanks and blanks and blanks and blanks. So, I don't have a video up of how I converted it, but cheap old central machinery, Harbor Freight lathe, but I put a two and a half horse treadmill motor on it. And it's got a fully functional tack. I just spun that by hand. So. It ain't the best in the world, but until I can afford a bigger one, God knows they're expensive. This works. I almost forgot. Turning tools, Carter and Sons, half inch bowl gouge, three quarter inch wood beater. Carbides, none of mine are negative rake. Don't fall. Meaning they have a negative angle on here instead of just being flat. Um, this is a square radius, squared. This is a simple wood turning tools that I just made a handle for. Um, okay. Yep, I knew that was going to happen. I got different sizes of these carbides. Um, and the base is like a 15 or something. And then, there it is. And this is the 8.6 millimeter, the one that I always talk about. That thing really gets the job done. Another simple wood turning tools that I made a handle for. And this is the handle that came with the simple wood turning tools with the diamond point. Um, this is just the old tenon that I parted off of a hollow form. Drilled a hole in the center for the... And stick it in where the tail stock has been stuck in with the nail. And then I've got a measured out for my tenon and mortise that way I get it right every single time and this is for the four inch jaws which is these right here and it's still a mess I just got there working on a piece not too long ago 
And the simple hollowing system that I use, um, it's got a carbide on there, laser. Sometimes I'll swap this out for the homemade one that I've got a uh, high speed steel put on. The glue I use, I don't have any thin right now, but it's Glue Masters, thick, medium, and thin. Like I said, I've got to get the thin in. I don't have any of that right now. And I've got the uh, one way jig set up. And the Hurricane 180 grit CBN wheel. It's probably the best thing that I've bought so far. It does a great job sharpening the bowl gouges. Um, sharpening carbides, I'll show you that too. And all the carbides, what you'll need is diamond, diamond plates, and diamond hones. I've got 1,000, 1,200. 1500 and up to 1800 and just put some lapping fluid on there top down meaning the top of the carbide will go down just lay them down on the fluid and rub them in you go from a thousand to 1800 and you'll have them back new instead of having to buy new ones it does take a little while but i'd rather sharpen them than have to uh buy new ones every time but anyway, don't be afraid to play with stuff, especially your epoxy, because um, you never know what you will figure out how to do. That smooth as it can be. Oh, come on, get in focus. It looks topographical, but it's not. Anyway. Oh, and what I do is what I do. If you go past 60 PSI on your pressure pot and it goes boom, boom, that's not on me, it does say 50 PSI. <laughs> so, um, I right, said so this is just what I do. I had somebody was asking the pouring process, mold process. So I figured I'd do a breakdown of everything that I do. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Keep an eye out. I've got one, two, three, three right now, four. This should be posting pretty soon. See ya.